I'm Olivier, I'm the head of pedagogy of uh, School uh, 42. And, uh, well, I guess it's time for a practice lab. Um, I will try to explain to you what is 42, and also why I think that it can be an example of digital transformation in education, and uh, how, uh, hopefully, it will be for you an example of, uh, well, a concrete example of a new paradigm of education. So, um, 42, it's an information technology school. Uh, it's located in Paris, and it has been created five years ago, in 2013. Um, Xavier Niel did create it 42. He's uh, very famous in France. He's a French telecom tycoon, owner of one of the four telecom companies in France. And, uh, well, um, he decided to create 42 to train students uh, as an IT professional. Um, because, uh, well, because we have some small problems actually in France. Um, usually France is known as the sixth world economy. Um, I think that it's a result of a well-negotiated um, industrial revolution uh, 100 years ago. But unfortunately, it's not the case regarding the e-economy. We are at the 25th rank and it's lowering, so we definitely have a problem. It's not only a French problem, actually, it's a European problem. Almost all the countries in Europe are facing this uh, lack of IT professional. The European Commission, um, something like six years ago, stated in a report that uh, by 2020, so almost uh, next year, uh, by 2020 there will be a lack of one million professional, IT professionals all over Europe. So we definitely need to do something about that. When we are thinking about e-economy, well, usually this nice company that are coming to uh, our mind, and uh, Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, Twitter. From my point of view, these companies represent the second stage of IT in companies in the labor market. The first stage was back in the 80s and the 90s when IT was an automation process for an already existing chain of value inside a company. Before you had some paper files from one desk to another, then you had some floppy disks, and then you have some network connecting people, but it was always the same chain of value. It was the same way of making cash and making business in companies just an automation process. But now for the last 20 years, well, with the internet, with the high connectivity, everyone has a smartphone in his pocket, um, well, we are in the second stage. IT has a more strategic role inside company. IT can create new business models. Today, with your own smartphone, you can choose the model of shoe you want to buy, the color, Maybe the logo you want to print on it and it's sent directly to the factory who is going to create the shoes for you. So it's a completely new way of making money, of making cash. IT has this new uh, role of new strategic role in companies. When I'm thinking about education, well, I'm thinking about edX, Coursera, MOOCs in general. But, hey, MOOCs are only an automation of what is happening inside a classroom. So maybe MOOCs is only the first stage of IT, of digitalization of education. So we need to move forward and to go to the second stage of education, in, uh, of digitalization in education. And this is definitely connected to what we also can see in France, we have a disconnection between public education and the expectation and the needs of the society and of the library market. Today, in a classroom, well, uh, usually it's an individualistic way of learning, and also it's a way of cloning people. When you have the same degree, you usually will answer the same way uh, a problem you have in front of you. Today, in companies, in society, what do you need? Well, you need first collaboration, 
because usually without collaboration it's not possible to have a competitive product on the market. And also, today you need some innovation, you need people that think out of the box. It's not possible to have this approach if everyone is answering the same way all the problems are facing. So that's why, from my point of view, education is disconnected from society and the labor market. Xavier Niel, who created 42, was facing both problems. He was facing the lack of IT professional, and he did also, from previous experiments, realize that, well, education cannot fill the gap. Education is not providing the skilled enough people for their own, its own business. So that's why he decided to create 42. Um, here's a nice picture. It's a picture of one of our three computer rooms. We have almost 300 computers there. And in the whole building, it's almost 900 computers. Students spend almost all of their time here. And uh, they are experimenting our pedagogical model called peer learning. Right before explaining to you what is peer learning, two important points. When we created 42, we decided to have no degree requirement. Why that? Well, if education, public education is disconnected from society and from the needs of the company, why should I rely on a public degree for my selection process? Today, someone with a French high school degree, I don't know if it has or not talent for IT. It does not reveal IT talent. Also, unfortunately in France, and it has been stated by the last two PISA reports from the OECD, we have a problem. There is a strong correlation between poor social background and the difficulty to access to higher education. So we wanted when creating 42, we wanted to detect IT talent and to select people with a, regardless their school background and regardless their social background. So that's why we decided to have a school completely free for the students. Our selection process is split in two different parts. First, we have online tests. And then students, well, not yet students, candidates, are coming in 42 in our main building for a four weeks long selection test. They are spending almost all night and days in 42 to actually taste what is the curriculum. They will taste two things. Do they like IT? Do they like coding? Do they like creating piece of software? This will be the big part of the curriculum. Some of them never could before entering the selection process. So uh, it's possible for them to access and to be admitted in 42, but at some point they need to realize and to figure out if they like this or not. Also, we need to uh, show people what is our peer learning system and if they fit into it, because some people does not fit at all in our pedagogical model. Today, 42 is more than 3,000 students. Well, actually, this slide is a little bit outdated because a week ago we had our new incoming batch and it's near 4,000 right now. 42 is open 24 by 7. And here is our peer learning model. First of all, well, we do not have any lecture. We do not have any teacher we do not have any online course available for the students. So what are students doing? Well, it's a 100% project-based, hands-on-based curriculum. Our students are facing software development challenge. They need to create piece of software. They need to code to create an actually working software on a computer. To do this, their job will be to collect information, to filter this information, because they can find some 
true information, false information, irrelevant information. So they need to learn how to filter this. At some point, they will be able to find a solution to their problem. Usually, they can do this alone. They need to collaborate. Collaboration is really the key here. They need to debate with each other. They need to explain, hey, how did you understood this project? Well, I think that I can solve this project this way. No, I think you're wrong. It's something is missing, uh, or maybe this corner case will not be addressed, and you need to change a little bit uh, and to have a different approach. What we want to do here is to create collective intelligence and to have people debating and finding together new hypotheses that no one brought in the first time. These new hypotheses will be tested and probably it will fail. So they will debate again and they will try again and again. It's definitely a try and fail and try again approach. What is happening when the project is over? Well, the students will do some peer evaluations. Each student will tell, okay, my project is over, and then our intranet system will open a rendezvous system. So they can have five, usually it's five different um, defense with other students from the community. Each student will use a rating scale to uh, do the evaluation of your project. Two cases, your project is a failure, then you will need to try this project again. If your project is a success, well, it will unlock the next project or the next projects. Sometimes you have more than one project that is unlocked when a new, uh, previous one is a success. Each student will be able to choose its own path into our gamified uh, curriculum. And also each student will be able to progress at its own pace. Okay, here you have a nice and cryptic um, diagram, I would say. Actually, it's a design and it's a picture that is representing the complete curriculum for the students. Each student know in green the project he did it and succeed. In red, the project, he failed and he will be able to try again. In a uh, little bit difficult probably for you to see the white projects that are the available projects because he uh, got the requirement for this. And the gray one, it's a still locked project because the students do, do not have the requirement to unlock and to access to this project. So at any time, each student will have a complete view of all the different paths that are available. We uh, designed the whole curriculum for something like almost three years long, but some students are doing this curriculum more quickly, in one year and a half. Other students, from the beginning, uh, will start to plan their curriculum in five or six years because, for example, they need a part-time job. To live in Paris, it's expensive, the school is free, but you still need to rent a flat and to eat every day, so uh, some students need a part-time job. Our gamification system includes some experience points, experience point sum-ups, and students uh, go through different levels. Uh, we have uh, 17 skills, we are using a local currency, uh, we have quests, badges, houses, just like in Harry Potter. We have a lot of different uh, gaming uh, classic effects. Um, we decided to have this gamified approach, um, well, at first for a motivation, motivation level. Uh, some of our students are geeks, so they do love playing video games, so it's uh, easy for them to be involved in the curriculum uh, because it just acts like a video game. Also, we have a stigmatization failure in public uh, French education. So we want to legitimate a try and fail approach. And with this video game, it's okay to say that, okay, the first level, I will try two or three times before succeeding the first level. Then I will need to try the second level probably 10 times, and then for the third level, develop a strategy to be able to solve it, and so on. 
we want to legitimate this approach. All of this uh, pedagogical model is not a five years old pedagogical model. It's actually, it has been actually been developed for 25 years. And the first goal initially was to be close to what is happening in a company. In a company, usually you do not have any teacher. You will need to create actual piece of software to sell them to customer. You need today in a company to collaborate starting from the beginning. I think that there is too much information today available online. And uh, if you want to have a competitive product, you need to have a strong collaboration because not all the needed information can stuck just into one unique brain. It's not possible. You need to have a strong collaboration starting from the beginning. And finally, more and more companies are using some peer reviews and flat management. And uh, the first ones that come into my mind is Google, for example, who had for a long time some kind of flat uh, management uh, way of, uh, uh, of working in the company. I'm not a researcher. I'm not a pedagogy specialist. But from time to time, a lot of people told us, hey, you definitely have a social constructivist approach. Of course, I think that our model can be connected by some ways to the work of Jean Piaget, we already mentioned him uh, yesterday and uh, two days ago. Uh, also, Celestin Freno or Maria Montessori. And if you may know Sugata Mitra, um, I think also that his experiment in the slum in New Delhi and also his experiment in UK primary school are pretty close to what we are doing. If you don't know Sugata Mitra, uh, please go and see his famous TED talk uh, 10 years ago, I think. Uh, he's explaining uh, very, uh, very well uh, his experiment and it's very interesting. Um, I've also had some feedbacks um, after some conferences. Uh, some people are calling what we are doing natural learning. They are definitely connecting our way of learning on, uh, with um, the way uh, babies are uh, learning how to talk and how to walk. Um, actually, I get that uh, when a baby wants to talk, you don't say to him, please stop. First, I will give you a lecture about gravity and the forces on your leg, and then after you will be able to try to work. But you will need to succeed at the first time, or I will yell at you. So, hopefully, it's not happening like this. And um, well, maybe there is some natural way of learning for people, and if we can recreate um, close context to this, maybe it's easier for students to learn. Okay, I'm running a little bit short on time. Um, quickly, some results. Well, so far we have a lot of job and internship offers. We also have very good feedbacks from companies. Uh, they are uh, telling us that we are definitely developing some uh, needed skills for the digital transformation. And before addressing more specifically the skills, we also have some students that do not complete the curriculum because they have very good job opportunities and they launch their career. And if they are doing this in a sustainable way, it's okay for the us. Our goal is not to have a student that completes the curriculum. Our goal is to have a student launching its own career in a sustainable way. Sustainable is interesting, is important here because, uh, well, if in 10 years, uh, our students are stuck and need to be trained again, we did fail. It's not our goal, actually. Of course, we will develop some technical skills, like artificial intelligence, like security, object-oriented programming, uh, but our real goal is to have people that will be able to adapt during 40 years, during all their career, because IT is evolving very fast. Today, I don't know what I should have inside my curriculum. 
so it will be okay for my students for the next 40 years. It's not possible to know. In five years, in 10 years, there will be some new languages, there will be some new technology, and students will need to train again. So that's why adaptation, problem solving, collaboration, critical thinking, self-learning, creativity, it's very important to develop actually these skills. I'm lying to my students. They think that they will develop uh, technical skills, but our real goal is here, is to develop an agile state of mind. I'm definitely right. We have a lot of connection with all our ecosystem, meaning companies, meaning startups, meaning other schools. For example, HCE uh, is a French famous business school. Uh, we are doing a lot of conferences and hackathon. Uh, so our students have an open mind about the labor market and the different kind of jobs they can have on the labor market. I won't tell you anything about our Pearl Opera experiment. It's an experiment with uh, unemployed people from uh, almost two years, and we try to train them uh, so they will have the new state of mind of I understand IT in uh, uh, is a new role of IT in companies today. And finally, we have an entry program, so uh, our students who want to create their own company can do this. So I hope that this very short introduction about what is 42 was uh, um, okay for you. I think we offer what is an alternative way of learning, a different way of learning, and I hope that I did convince you that it's uh, probably an example of what can be a digital transformation into education. Thank you very much.